hopefully we see the attendees number go up in a couple seconds here. Uh oh. Okay. Having deja vu. I was just thinking that. I'm like, do we have a password on this one again? Oh. No, there's no password. No, there's no password. All right, we're just waiting for more attendees to start off and then uh, we'll start this webinar. Give it a couple more minutes. We'll get going. Mike and Stephanie, I'm thinking we can just get started and let the rest of the attendees join in uh, as they come. So I will start off here. Okay. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to ACI Ontario's third and final installment of our Fall Concrete Webinar Series. Uh, today's webinar should be about 40 minutes. Please feel free to ask questions in your go-to control panel, and we'll be sure to have them addressed at the end of the presentation. Without further ado, I would like to introduce today's presenters. We're pleased to have Michael Bell and Stephanie Roddick of Stubby's Precast here today to present on the construction of Stubby's Precast head office and total precast. This building received an award for architectural merit in the 2019 Ontario Concrete Awards. In addition to being a beautiful structure and is an exceptional showcase of why total precast concrete building systems are becoming a popular choice for many construction products. With that, I'd like to thank you all for registering, supporting your local CI chapter, and I will now pass it off to Michael and Stephanie. Thanks, Danny. Um, as he mentioned, uh, we are Stubby's Precast. Uh, both Mike and Steph are here. So just a little bit about ourselves. Uh, my name is Michael Bell. I've been with Stubby's for almost six years now. 
I've done a little bit of everything with this company. I started off installing the product uh, out on site. Then I went into the plant for a very short stint to learn how all the products are manufactured and uh, put together. Then after that, I got myself into the drafting area where I learned all the details and connections to draw them and put together entire holocore like shop drawing. Uh, then lastly, and where I am currently, I transitioned into the sales area where I started off in estimating uh, with just kind of regular holocore jobs, progressing my way into the total precast jobs. And now I'm currently a commercial sales rep for Stubby's Precast, st uh, specializing in the total precast builds. Hi, I'm Stephanie Roddick and I started as an estimator and I'm still in that role um, today. So been almost about um, three years with the company. I'm also a part of the social media um, coordination and our marketing with our website. So kind of doing a little bit of that side of things as well as working with our sales reps in the total precast side, like Mike was saying. Um, so today, with Stubby's Precast, we're gonna focus on our head office, um, but kind of go to a background of what exactly is Total Precast because not everybody knows. So it's a pre-designed with offsite manufactured concrete products um, to build the entire structure of the building. So this includes holocore, the which are the floor slabs, walls, columns, and beams, but we also do uh, double T systems for parking garages. Uh, we're also in the agricultural market. Um, um, but then with all this, it's manufactured in our site and then trans, I mean, on our plants and then transported to site for erection. So the precast is reinforced with either conventional rebar, pretension strand, or a combination of both, just depending on which product, uh, what the use, the end use is, and where it's going to be inside the building. Total precast structures are becoming a popular choice, so we're seeing a huge boom um, in the buildings within the industry. Uh, this is due to a shortage of labor. Speed of erection is quite fast with precast since it is manufactured off site and then just transported, ready to go. Um, and that architectural appeal, so we can do different finishes, uh, different colors and things like that, but we'll kind of touch base as we move forward. So to give kind of, um, uh, history of Stubby's Precast. So our company profile. So we started in 1982. So been around for a little bit. Um, we started in the agricultural market. So it was just one one employee. Um, so Herb Stubby started the company with hog feeders. Uh, from then he wanted to diversify into floor slats for the agricultural system. So um, the different type that go in dairy barns, beef barns, that type of thing. Uh, as the agricultural market grew, he hired his first employee, which happened to be Andy Stubby, which is our current president, so his son. So along that, uh, Andy brought automation with precast and wanted to definitely diversify what they could do, increase their capabilities, and kind of hit more of the market. So that's when our first slat machine came into play. Um, so with that, we then saw more precast in the market uh, within growth in the field. So then we needed holocore. So we started producing holocore in 2001. Uh, as that was growing, in 2006, we built our plant too. So now that was able to bring in um, doing solid slabs with the hollow core so we could reach more commercial markets um, and residential as well. So from there, we purchased Double T Mold um, in 2010. Um, to again expand our market and make sure that we could kind of be within all different fields. Uh, and we just kept growing from there. And then in 2011, we actually doubled our plant uh, size because uh, we were in such demand with the 
Holocore and our other precast products. And then we were going into the total precast market. So we decided um, to get into the wall systems, um, making sure that we are not just doing flooring and residential, we could hit that um, institutional, industrial, commercial market and start with total precast. So we went from our first total precast build in 2011 to today, which we have built over 40 buildings and we have so many in the queue, it's crazy. Um, so it's just gonna keep growing and booming. Um, with that need, we then built plant number three. So this plant is quite special to us. Um, it's highly automated. It's a conveyor system. It's, um, it's really quite neat actually. So it's European design. Um, and we are the only precasters in North America to offer this um, system. So 200,000 square feet plant and now it seems to be not enough. Um, so we're continuing to grow. We started off so small, so we had a little office, um, and now um, we're kind of going into our new office, and we'll talk about that. So this is kind of to give you an idea, 1982, the little house, the little garage, where they were making the hog feeders in their little barn, um, and then that expansion in 2016. So if you look at the very bottom, just above the wording of 2016, you can see where plant was plant one um, was in comparison to our whole site that we own. So you can see plant two up top, plant three. Um, so there has been a lot of growth within our manufacturing side of things, um, kind of trying to keep up to demand and with the markets. And we haven't really had too many upgrades since then. Um, so the company investments was to the product, but we got into the point where we needed to shift um, our focus into our head office staff as our office was super tiny and we needed more drafters, we needed more engineers um, and that type of thing. So this was our office. So around that red circle, we called it uh, Andy's Trailer Park. Uh, definitely looked like a trailer park, just the little mobile offices all attached together. Um, so the company has become too large, uh, so we realized that in the current setup was not attainable for the direction of the company that we wanted to go in. So we decided to build a new office. So with that, it was kind of like, what do we do? Where do we go? Um, how do we want the end product to look? So these are just a couple of progress pictures along the way. Um, the design outcomes that we were looking for when we reached out to a handful of architects was to see what kind of proposal they could come up with. Um, we knew we wanted, obviously it would be um, fully precast using our stubby precast products. We wanted it welcoming and highly visible. Uh, we are in the country. So we wanted something to stand out and not have that industrial um, manufacturing feel. We wanted something more modern, uh, energy efficient, and then still be close to the manufacturing activities to um, kind of keep an eye on that and just be close to those staff out there. Uh, definitely a showcase. So when we tour new clients, current clients, uh, we definitely want to be able to them to basically walk up and touch the product and know exactly what they're getting. And then still some expansion capability, which is hard to think of at the time, but you don't want to build another office, so let's have room to expand. So we went with um, the firm called IBI Group. This was their initial rendition. Um, they they um, kind of took that modern design that we were talking about um, and definitely give a wow factor to our visitors, new clients, um, and stick out from uh, the farmland that we're in, like I was saying. So we wanted the two big wings on either side and connecting to the atrium to give that wow factor when you first walk in. Um, lots of natural light, 
to come through the building um, and get that beautiful view that we have of the countryside. So um, with that also, sorry, technical difficulty. These are kind of the areas that um, kind of stand out to the building. So we have multiple boardrooms. Before it was this tiny cram little space fighting over who's going to have what meeting when. Now there's lots of room. Um, the offices for the team uh, management to be able to have room um, for discussions and that welcoming feel. Uh, we have a fitness area for the staff um, to keep our wellness in check. That open atrium I was talking about, so we'll kind of go into detail later on about that. Clear sight lines, we wanted to be able to walk up to any of the staff. And as you can see, there's still room uh, definitely to add in more uh, desks. And then a nice games room in our lunchroom, so a larger area for everyone to kind of connect and um, take ease from the computer. And a little different right now with COVID, but. Uh, we definitely try and still connect with everybody. So, before I get into the little snippet to see the build, so this office is 40,000 square feet, so definitely larger than our original. The precast erection time uh, was about two months, and it definitely could have been faster as I was saying the erection speed for precast is um, quite impressive uh, but it kind of sat on the back burner we took our other projects um, to build first and then kind of used this as a filler for our teams when we had a, a minute to spare so the entire building took nine months before we could move in and here's a little quick video of the installation So we started from the foundation walls, which we'll kind of talk into. And then um, this is kind of touching base more in the exterior, uh, but the interior walls as well are precast. And we'll highlight more pictures later. So Stubby's own install crew put this all together. Um, we have multiple crews that go out to all the sites as we do in-house installation. So the final product, definitely close to those uh, renders that we saw and a um, couple extra stories to our original trailer park. So we have those bold, um, modern striking uh, contrast compared to the Greenland. We still wanted to keep it light and airy. There's lots of glass. Um, uh, the sunlight just beams in, sometimes a little bit too much, uh, but that's okay. Um, we wanted it more trendy, more current, but also to withstand time as uh, this will last us many years to come and uh, keep it that precast friendly design, but also push a little bit of um, design what you're normally used to just to kind of show clients that we are capable of much more. So this is another overview shot of our current uh, plant our storage, our office. We built a brand new install shop just behind the office. Um, so definitely we're continuing to grow and meet the demands that uh, are currently in play. So to go into a bit of the design features, going to hand it over to Mike. So be it our own office, we want to make this uh, a little bit uh, of a showcase, obviously, as Steph mentioned before, uh, and we wanted to highlight precast in as many locations as possible. Uh, the first and foremost that we ended up doing is using insulated double wide uh, precast walls for the entire exterior. Uh, this also included the foundation walls, which I'll touch on into the next one. Uh, these walls were anywhere between 17 to 19 inch thick. Uh, most of the exterior of this building was a load-bearing element and that's why these walls got pushed out to such a great thickness. So anywhere uh, that we are taking significant load, we had about a 300 mil 
uh, interior load bearing element, then about four inches of Kingspan K20 insulation, and then another three inches uh, on the exterior of this building. That's the entire thing kind of is held together with using um, Delta ties. This is a composite tie that holds both of the Ys together that will eliminate any thermal bridges so you don't have any uh, metal tie coming back together. So it provides you a nice warm feel on the interior of this building. As I mentioned just a moment ago, our foundation walls we also made using uh, precast. This is pretty uncommon, um, obviously because of there is joints within a, a precast wall panel. So we went and we reached out to Tremco to assist with creating a detail um, that both of us would be comfortable with that would keep our basements uh, dry. Like half of this building, we do have an occupied space for storage. Uh, so it's a very important detail to keep it waterproof because we don't want a swimming pool in our basement. So using Tremco products with both uh, the Tremco 260 with uh, the reinforced uh, fiber mesh, and we did that around the entire exterior. And then when we, on top of that, we also used a, a drainage layer, the Tremco drain, and this provided us a very comfortable uh, detail and we have had zero leakage to date. So we do feel like this is a very uh, forward thinking product that might be coming more and more popular. One thing with this, you do need to have a cast in place footing because we all know that the excavation is not gonna be a 100% level. So in order to go and give you that surety of a true and flat piece of uh, concrete to work off of, we have to use a cast in place uh, footing. Um, as I mentioned, the entire exterior of the building is used uh, with insulated panels, but we did not go and stud and drywall any of the interior portion of the building. So we left that all exposed with a uh, painted concrete. Well, the problem that comes into play now is that we have to go and cast into each one of our panels, all of our electrical networking, um, communication wires. So we had to go and cast that all in. The biggest thing with that, it just is a lot more coordination up front. We use um, a 3D modeling software named Tecla. Using Tecla, we were able to go and draw in all the communications lines and uh, ducts that we would have to go and put into normally what would be a stud. And the electrician would have a lot of free flowing ideas in order to do this. To make this a lot easier on the electrician rather than having to fish through every single panel, we only brought it from above the drop ceiling to down into the panel itself. So he could go and play around with his wirings everywhere within the, the drop ceiling. So it made him bring from whatever networking area or electrical area in the building, it, it gave him a lot of flexibility rather than have to fish through only concrete. This one I, I definitely think was a very uh, nice detail that we were able to achieve um, and a good compromise for both us and the electricians. Um, yeah, and with the finished concrete, it, with it being nice and warm, being insulated, it's a, a very nice detail for the most part. Uh, the biggest awe, awe feature for our entire office would be our atrium. We have a lot of interesting details that we incorporated within our atrium. The first and foremost, and definitely the most apparent, would be our three-story sloped roof that we have. So with this, we had a, a curtain wall ceiling that we um, had to go and insulate each one of our uh, supporting structures, be it the holocore planks on either end or our beams, our exposed white beams. So we built the entire curtain wall structure on top of it with um, breaks within the connecting hardware so we wouldn't go and have any thermal bridging coming back into this building. 
the one nice thing about this obviously being curtain wall it brings a lot of natural light into the building as a whole and it filters throughout pretty well every single room it also provides a nice growing area which like the employees like to gather a lot more um, socially distant obviously with covid but we do definitely gather within this area a fair amount um, and then yeah like i said it's a good growing space um, in the winter time with all this light coming in and concrete being a nice uh, thermal mass it heats up so it's able to help us reduce any of our mechanical loading in the winter time oops um, another part within our our atrium is we have a bunch of floating catwalks and on top of one of the floating catwalks we have our we call it our signing room it's our probably our most fancy boardroom within it so the catwalks themselves we've uh, made them utilizing double t's uh, double t is obviously more well known for parking garage structures and not necessarily known as the most architecturally pleasing uh, precast product out there uh, we actually find it suits extremely well within um, our area because we've painted them white to match the existing walls around. We were able to hide a bunch of our mechanical that we had to get from both sides of the buildings underneath them. And it, with putting our, the one boardroom on top of it, you're definitely looking a lot more towards our boardroom than you are looking at the double T. So as a whole, the entire feel of the precast uh, double T and boardroom comes together um, really nicely. Within our uh, our boardroom, we were able to utilize uh, both a precast table. Uh, they actually we didn't manufacture this; we had some others do that for us. And then we also ourselves we were able to go and make some custom lights using uh, holocore planks, where we filled them solid and were able to put in nice little sleeves that we could go and put pot lights. It's definitely a great learning uh, tool and um, we're very, very happy with the way this came out. Um, also within it, we do have our very large and interesting uh, feature feature stair. This one's custom, custom made because we knew going into it that we couldn't just use a traditional monolithic uh, looking exit stair because it wouldn't go with the theme of the entire office so what we did we ended up having to go and create some custom risers we made them out of white cement to go and match with the, all the rest of the atrium and then on top of it we had also some custom made treads that we plopped on top uh, we didn't want to have any of the connections showing so we had to get a little bit more creative with the way that we had to uh, connect this back into the structure. So what we end up doing, we have a very, very large angle that's connecting both of the risers together and they're welded onto the top of the double T. And then when we flooded the top of the double T it, with our concrete topping, it covered up this connection. So it goes and has a nice almost floating look within our entire thing. As far as the treads, they're connected back into the risers using just a simple grout tube with uh, some 15M rebar as dowels underneath. And each of one of them is individually placed. So these took a little bit longer than our most common uh, monolithic stair that you can drop it and keep going. So with this, we're very happy with the result and the time that it had to go to put this one together. Um, and yeah, by far, if you guys are anyone's in the area, come and uh, visit and look at these. Uh, one of the design features, it's not really, wasn't much of a challenge. I guess the only challenge was figuring out where each finish we want to go and put into it. Uh, we have about 30 plus different form liners and finishes within the entire office. We did utilize a lot of form liners and multi-tonal stains. With the multi-tonal stain, we teamed up with a uh, knockoff um, they're a concrete stainer and they've done a fantastic job for us making it go and give us a very real natural look to our precast form liners. As far as within the atrium, we have a lot of white cement and we were able to provide this white cement using uh, the color aggregates 
they are also part of the ACI group and they did a great job that we're very happy with the aggregate within the white cement um, and the finishes that came out. So I'm just going to go and click through a couple of various form liners and uh, finishes that we had um, and then when I get to the end of it we'll have time for questions. So one is this just natural stack stone. We actually use this for our water feature in the reception area. This one be it just a wood siding kind of thing, tongue and groove option. This be it just a regular running brick pattern with a couple multi-tonal stones. This we would offer with both kind of a smooth kind of finish or this one actually has a more of a wired brush uh, style to it. One comment that we actually get with a lot of our brick is it the grout is just too perfect because no mason's going to obviously have everything exactly perfectly sp like spaced. So that was kind of like one comment that we're kind of have. So we're playing with a little bit of the form liners to kind of actually almost roughen it up a touch. This one is one of our main boardrooms down downstairs. This one we were able to go and create the entire world map. Uh, we did that. Use, utilizing um, insulation put into the bottom of the form and laid out onto the entire panel and then we were able to pull that off to go and do that. You're able to go and put whatever type of uh, image that you would like that is relatively simple. A lot a lot of people now are commonly doing it for the, the building number for the projects that we're doing right now. This one be another uh, masonry style finish. Uh, this is more of a rougher style brick. This one is just more modern style. It's not like you have to stick with the masonry or um, as you're going to see with the next one, this would be like a shaker style uh, kind of cedar shake. Some nice concentric circles, which are really popular now. This one is obviously a fluted uh, form liner, but this has a metallic finish on it. So this one actually came out looking exactly like a steel kind of siding, but the best part about it, it's never going to rust. So you're able to get this very true metal look within your building that you'd want for maybe an industrial kind of style, but you're never going to have to worry about the entire exterior of the building going to be finished uh, rusting. And then lastly, this is considered our graphic concrete. So with this one, you can lay down whatever image you want. This one obviously being a, a crane kind of image. And what they do is they take a more or less a large piece of, of cardboard and they impregnate a, a concrete retarder into the entire piece of cardboard. And as the entire panel is setting up, only those small select areas are gonna be like slowing down so we go once everything has set and cured we pull the panel up strip this cardboard off and pressure wash it and because of these different like uh, retarding admixtures slow it down you're able to go and get these like small little pieces of darker aggregate that kind of show through compared to the rest of the thing so this one's obviously like i mentioned before like a tower crane but we have another one that we did for a sample and it was like Marilyn monroe you can do flowers you can do whatever you really choose to be uh so really the the choices are endless so that's mainly the biggest thing with our office you can tour it around it's better much better in person um and yeah if you're ever interested at all uh this is my contact information danny also has it um yeah by far get in contact with us and we can set something up uh so yeah thanks for listening i know there was a couple of questions that have come in um yeah, uh, thank you very much, Mike. Thank you, Stephanie. Uh, my name is Alan Belanger. I'm the Secretary Treasurer of the Ontario Chapter. Uh, we do have a question. It's a two-part question here. Um, when in the design process do you need to be involved to make a project a total precast building? Um, the best time to get involved would be really right at the beginning of it. So if you guys have basically preliminary plans more 
more or less just outlining the outline of the building and roughly where you want your suites, that's the best time to come in contact with us. The reason why the total precast building structure, we like to go and have a lot of our loads line up like uh, all the way down into basically the foundation. So we, we'd like to play with your layout in order to give the most optimal uh, total precast layout for you. So by far, it's best to bring us on at the beginning of it. And also, can a conventional structure be switched to total precast as an alternative? Um, well, yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know directly what he means by uh, conventional structure, but mm -hmm. yeah, def definitely nearly any building uh, can be switched. Obviously, cost comes into uh, a play and same with the layout that comes into play. So like we will look at pretty much any building and give recommendations. Uh, if the building we feel is suitable, we go and we'll help you out. If it's something that's uh, very much designed as a cast in place kind of style, we'll be open and honest with you. Uh, and finally, I think you answered this one already, but um, are footings cast in place and the foundation walls precast? Yes. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, once again, Mike, uh, Stephanie, uh, thank you very much for this uh, presentation. It's a beautiful structure. Um, we'll have to maybe talk about um, coming down as the ACI chapter and doing a site tour one of these days. When, yeah, uh, absolutely. When hopefully, yeah. when hopefully all this COVID uh, nineteen is over with, and we can assemble again uh, as a group. Yeah, absolutely. We'd be more than interested in uh, hosting that for you guys. Um, like you mentioned, once COVID kind of calms down a bit, and we can have a lot more people uh, together, we would one hundred percent be willing to do that with you guys. All right. Thank you. And no to all the attendees, thank you very much for attending uh, our first hopefully uh, annual uh, fall concrete webinar series. Um, my thanks to all the speakers uh, over the past three days and to my co-organizers, uh, Danny Salvo, Stacia Van Zetten, uh, Richie Popoff. Uh, thank you again, gentlemen and ladies, uh, and we will be talking to you soon. Have a good day.